So my goal here is to show you how to set up a envir an anaconda environment specific to use it for use in uh, geospatial analysis. So instead of starting from scratch, I'm going to start off from a uh, an environment that I created for for data science. So it already has a lot of the data science packages installed. Okay, so if I go to my list of environments here in Anaconda Navigator, you can see I got a couple of different options here. So um, this one specifically, this Maxwell PySci GS, um, is a kind of standard data science environment where I have installed the data science library. So things like uh, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Scikit, Sci Scikit-learn. Okay, so instead of, again, starting from scratch, what I'm going to do is clone this library and then add what the additional, um, or sorry, clone this environment and then add the additional libraries to it. So I'm going to click on that environment. Here it's going to load in all the, the list of packages there. And then I want to click on clone and then give it a new name. So we're going to call this one Maxwell Pi Psi GS3. And this is the location that will get cloned into on my local machine. So it will be in my user account there, Anaconda 3 environments, and then in this specific folder. I'm going to click clone there. All right, so this can take a little bit of time depending on you know, how, how many packages or libraries you have installed into the environment and whatnot. Um, so I'll cut here and then we'll come back whenever the environment's been cloned. Okay, so now I'm in my cloned environment. So it again has all the same libraries available that the original had. If I go up to the home menu here, it also ins we can see that it also installed the, the tools that were installed in the prior environment. So Jupyter Notebooks and Spider, for example. Okay, so now we should be ready to actually um, start adding additional packages or libraries into this environment. So to do that, I'm going to go to my Anaconda list here and select PowerShell prompt. The regular command prompt would work too. And that opens up the command prompt here. So now I'm going to activate this new environment. So we're going to go to Conda, activate, and the environment name. So Maxwell Pi Psi GS3. Okay, so now we're, we're in that environment. All right, so now we can start adding in the additional libraries that we need. So to start off with, we're going to look at GeoPandas, which is used for working with vector data. So according to this, it can be installed with Conda install GeoPandas. So uh, we'll give that uh, sh uh, sh a shot. You also can use the, the Conda, Conda Forge channel there specifically. Um, note that um, f uh, GeoPandas has several dependencies. So let's look at those. So NumPy, we, sh we have that installed already um, in, in Pandas. Um, those are in our original data science library. Shapely is used for working with geometric shapes, so we'll need to have that installed. Fiona allows for, uh, for Python to talk to GDAL. And then PyProj allows Python to talk to Proj. So that's your data abstractions and your um, spatial reference systems. So those are all required. And then there's a couple others that are optional. So for example, we have Rtree for spatial indexing, a couple libraries for connecting to PostGIS, PostgreSQL databases, and then we have a geocoding library, library here with, with uh, GeoPy. And then we have things related to graphing and mapping, matplotlib, which we already have, Descartes, which we should install, and then map classify, which we should install. Okay, so some of these dependencies should be installed automatically. So let's have a look at that. So I'm going to do conda, install, and then we'll do geopandas. And then it should... See, it'll give us a list here of dependencies once it's finished its um, search. All right, there we go. All right, so let's see. We have let's see what we have here with GDAL and Fiona. Looks like they're going to be installed. 
Uh, let's see what else was required. There's Proj and Shapely. And then the ones we already have, NumPy and stuff, aren't listed there. So it's going to install some of the dependencies, but some of the others we'll have to do on our own. So let's go ahead and let it run this installation. And this can take a little bit of time. There's you know, multiple dependencies and packages and libraries that need to be installed. All right, so that's done. Um, we could do um, conda list if we want to see the list of packages in this environment now. So for example, now we should definitely have uh, like geopandas and whatnot that was just installed. So let's see if we can find that in the list. There we go, there's geopandas. So that's update. So that's successfully updated this environment. All right, as we saw already, going back to this, NumPy pandas was there, Shapely, Fiona, and PyProj were installed. Um, our tree will get installed. Um, these map ones were not, so I'm gonna try to do those manually. So let's look at that. I'm gonna go to Descartes, and this should be able to be installed with pip. So let's run that and see what happens. So we'll do a pip install Descartes. And okay, so that looks good. So we've got that installed. Um, and then we want to do map classify, which we should be able to install, I believe, with pip. So let's just try that. So we'll do uh, pip install map classify. Okay, so I believe we have everything now that we need um, for, for the for GeoPandas. So now we're going to move on to the raster tools. I'm going to minimize this for now. So uh, this is Rasterio. Here's the documentation. I've had some issues installing this in the past. Um, it's got to be able to see your GDAL installation, for example. I've had the best luck with using the Condo, with using Conda Forge. So let's go to let's find the let's go to the GitHub page for Rasterio. So we'll do Ras, uh, Rasterio. Ah, uh, GitHub. Oh, I guess I already had it open. <laughs> All right, um, and then it should give us some install directions in here. Uh, you can also install, so I, there's this method with pip, um, and then there's install through Conda Forge. I've had luck with this, so let's try to run this installation through Conda Forge. So drop that in and see what happens. Okay, so yeah, and then we have a couple um, add ons there. So let's do. All right, so that looks like that's installed now. And then, uh, lastly, well, before we get into doing the white box tool stuff, we probably want to, we might want to be able to install or use uh, base packages. So there's this package call, or called Contextly, works with GeoPandas, that allows you to read in uh, base maps. So we'll try this out with, um, we'll just use the pip for now. So pip install context. I noticed with this one you have to install raster rasterio first or you'll get an error, just just so you know. Okay, so I so looking through here we've got pandas, rasterio, the dependencies. So um, two other things we want to install is earthpy. So let's look that up. Earthpy. Uh, here's the docs for it. Install. So it looks like we can do that through pip. So we'll do that one. So pip install earth pi. Okay. And then the white box tools. So uh, white box tools is a little confusing. So um, First, you need to actually have the toolbox. 
So you can get that from the white box tools uh, web page. Now there's two kind of setups. There's white box tools, and then there's the white box GAT, which is like a GUI. And you don't actually need to do to uh, grab that. You can you don't need to have the GUI component if you just want to run it through Python. So to get that, you click download here, and then you're going to end up with a folder. And you what you want to do is place that folder. Um, let me show you. I just stuck it here on my desktop for now. So this is the download white box tools, and then go and then the folder um, will have this WBT folder in it, and there's all the white box tool stuff. So you have the Python and the executable. So what you want to do is place that folder in the same location as your Python and your excuse me, your like your notebooks. So if we go to my C drive, users, Amaxel six, it's my user there, then what I've done is I've copied that here, which is the same place where my Python and my notebooks live. Um, so it should be able to reference it from there. And then we also want to install um, the, the Python component. So we'll go to and do that. So we'll just do with pip. So pip install white box tools. Let's see if it finds it. Uh, let's have a look at that. Yeah, I guess we'll do white box tools, tools Python. And see what we come up with here. Oh, it's just white box. Okay. So pip install white box. Okay, so it looks like we're good. And then uh, last, I guess that was white box tools, earth price. I think that's everything. So unless I forgot something, I'm pretty sure that's everything we'll, that we need to work through our uh, exercises. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, deactivate this. We'll do conda deactivate and then the name of the environment, gs2. Oh, sorry. GS3. Okay, cool. Now, if we go to our notebook, we'll just activate it as long as we're in the right environment. So I'm going to launch the notebook. And this, what we're going to do now is just test and make sure that these packages seem to be working. So I'm going to grab a notebook that has some spatial stuff in it. So I'm going to use this Python spatial notebook and see if everything works. So first thing I'm going to do is clear all the output and we'll, we'll run some of the cells and make sure it's working. So here's all the imports. Some of this you should be familiar with already. So I've got uh, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib. Again this line here is used so that the plots plot in line in the notebook. Here's some of our new spatial libraries. So GeoPandas, Contextly, Rasterio, and these are kind of the standard aliases. So GPD, CTX, Rio. And then here's calling in the white box tools, assuming that the, the folder is at the correct location, and you're assigned the alias there. And then I'm pulling in EarthPy and a couple like modules from EarthPy, and then I'm setting up some figure um, default. Uh, figure a uh, default figure size. Okay, so I'm going to run that and see if it sees everything. And hopefully, if you don't get any messages, that should at least indicate that it's seeing those libraries, which is good. So that worked. Um, here, I'm trying to read in a, a, a vector data set with GeoPandas and then plotting it. Oh, so that looks like that works. That's indicating that our GeoPandas is working. Here I'm just reading the first few records from the table. You can see that the geometry is stored there as part of the table. Let's see what else we want to do. Let's just plot some other maps. So this is just doing some like core pleth mapping with GeoPandas. This is like a population density map. Here we have multiple axes. And here we have a map with multiple layers in the same axis space overlaid. All right, so it looks like our geopandas and dependencies are working. 
Now if we go down to Rasterio, here I'm pulling in a elevation grid and then printing some info about it. So it connected to the grid, it's one band, number of rows and columns, pixels, bounding geometry, European Petroleum Survey Group code for the spatial reference. And here I'm reading it, reading that data in and as a NumPy array, and then we're displaying it. So there's that DEM, here's uh, multiple axes with different symbology on that data set. And here I'm pulling in a multi-band uh, Landsat 8 scene, there's seven bands, converting into array, plotting individual bands using uh, matplotlib, and then plotting um, simulate true color and then false color composites using EarthPy. And then the last section here, we're uh, using the white box tools. So um, here I'm just creating variables to link to some data on my local machine. And then um, the first example here is I'm running a dissolve on some watershed boundaries. So it looks like that worked. And then I'm just reading that back in to see what the result looks like. So the original boundaries and then the dissolved boundaries. So in short, it looks like everything's working. So we've got a environment now that we can do our geospatial data science and that build, that build on top of our original um, data science um, environment.